Everyone say hi. Hi. Yeah. In this video, we're going to take you along on our family vacation for spring break 2023. Yes, I know it's awfully snowy for spring break, but that's Switzerland for you. You'd think taking a family of seven to Switzerland for two weeks would be an extremely expensive trip, but I promise you we spent less than it would have cost to buy a brand new iPhone. It helps that we drove five hours from where we're staying at in Germany, so our travel cost was only about $100, $150 in fuel, and we used an Airbnb at $92 a night for 10 nights, which came to just under $1,000 USD. Not only was this trip a chance to take the family somewhere we've never been before, but it was also an excellent excuse to use the new DJI Mini 2 drone that I got for Christmas. Now the DJI Mini 3 just came out and it's got some nice features, so you should see a couple of DJI Mini 2s coming out on the used market for a pretty good price, just like we got ours. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I don't typically buy anything brand new. So getting an old used drone that still does 4K at 60 FPS makes me pretty happy. This is the Airbnb that we stayed at, and I will do an in-depth review of this place as we go along. But make sure you stay till the end because most of the good footage happens when we climb Jungfrau and go to the top of Europe with the entire family. So stick around and we'll see you later in the video. <laughs> Whoo! I don't think it's spring yet. I wasn't going to do a video this week, but I woke up to some snow out here. We're in the foothills of the Swiss Alps at an Airbnb. And it's absolutely gorgeous. This is the view. Now, Snow's coming in, so I'll I'll throw a picture of the view up here for you to see. Yep, you should be seeing it right about now. And you can see that from every window that's facing south here in this Airbnb. We brought the van because, well, got five kids. You got to fit them all in there. This ramp that goes up over the house goes to an old barn. This place was built in 1884, so it's nearly 150 years old. I love how we can drive right down here, drop our trailer. There's an old goat and chicken barn built in right here. It's just filled with uh, firewood though. Let's see if it adjusts. So no longer used for animals. Original door, exterior staircases to get up to the bedrooms. Super cool areas back here. Wood shop and another barn are back there. It's uh, Switzerland, so we brought a bunch of coolers. Food is about two or three times the cost here than it is in Germany. Continue around the back side. Most of the windows face this view. There are some off to the other sides. So you've got root cellar moving up. Actually, the root cellar doesn't have windows. That is a shop or something, garage. There's a root cellar in the back. Uh, dining room and first floor bedroom windows. And then second floor up there. Love these overhangs. Beautiful. We've got too much glare. Hold on. There we go. Beautiful original wood. 150 year old building. Now we picked it because it was the cheapest place to bring the whole family. It's got like eight beds. And it was uh, 92 bucks a night, which is pretty cheap for this area. Again, not a good example of the view, but right through there are the Swiss Alps on the horizon. You can hear the kids playing up in there already. They're having a great time exploring all the nooks and crannies. This house is very unique. Uh, there's a, another set, another room up there that's not furnished. So I'm not using that one. Back door. 
and then a second access to the upstairs bedroom so you don't need to walk through one bedroom get to the other this seems relatively new but there's a root cellar in here I don't have the key but you can hear it echoes perfectly old farm trough and then out the back here compost is this goat trail it leads up to these goat pastures I'm not gonna do a real-time walkthrough because it goes for miles and it would just be me huffing and puffing up the hills and uh, slow footage of slightly snow-covered hills now it's late March but we're fairly high up in the mountains thus the snow not above the tree line obviously but a beautiful little location about a 40 or 50 minute drive north of Interlaken which is an awesome little town that we checked out yesterday and some beautiful beautiful multi hundred foot waterfalls so there she is now the best thing about this little cottage it's like I said with five kids ooh, it's coming down again Let's see if you can see the snow coming down with five kids who are young uh, mostly 15 year old 10 year old six six twins and five if you've been following the channel you know who they are I'm not gonna reintroduce them all um, they can get kind of chaotic so we get them all in this place where there's plenty of bedrooms plenty of beds there's not internet there's not TV but you can still have a really good time um, and they can be completely out of their mind bonkers crazy and nobody cares nobody can hear them screaming and screeching now I, I'm careful letting them out of the house because it's straight down <laughs> I hope that captures on camera but when we're with them we pop up these trails have some picnics in the mountains and when the snow clears up we drive 40 or 50 minutes and get ourselves into the Swiss Alps spring break 2023 stuck up in the mountains absolute snowstorm came in hey I couldn't be happier <laughs> not quite spring spring break we ended up spending four days at that cabin as the snow came down and the roads became extremely treacherous coming down out of that mountain pass. But it turns out, apparently I needed some time in a small cabin with a nice wood stove in order to fully relax and enjoy that spring break. If I had done the whole thing at full speed up and down mountains and checking out all the tourist activities and whatnot in that area for the whole 10 days, I think I would have come home a bit more exhausted than when I originally left. There's something nice about stoking a fire, sitting back, playing a couple of board games, and having minimal access to the outside world, especially these days. Not to mention it gave me some time to get some beautiful drone shots of the area. And yes, I know that barely edited drone shots with a voiceover is not the way to maximize retention with today's YouTube audience. But the purpose of this video is not to maximize retention. It's to document some of the cool things that the family's seen on our 20-year journey back to Trout Lake, Michigan. I'm betting that at 9 minutes into this video, most of the people who aren't full-time viewers or dedicated patrons of this channel have already clicked off. And that's okay. But that tells me that most of you who are still here know the story. You've read the blogs or the vlogs on followthecompassnorth.com. You've heard the whole spiel about gathering capability for 20 years and then heading back to the homestead. So I'm not going to reiterate everything I've already said in previous videos. Instead, let's focus on the content in front of you. This waterfall that is filmed near Lauterbrunnen, which is near Interlaken, is over 480 meters tall. Even ignoring all the safety parameters in my DJI drone, I can only get up to about 500 meters off the ground before it won't let me go any higher. Which means I barely caught the very top of this waterfall in the beginning of this shot. 
and I didn't cut this shot or edit it in any way. It is real-time footage coming from the top all the way down to the bottom of this amazing, nearly 500-meter tall, 1,500-foot-tall waterfall. J.R. Tolkien actually took this specific city and this, these specific waterfalls and this specific valley as inspiration when writing about Rivendell in the Lord of the Rings series. That makes this literally one of the most magical places on Earth, from a certain point of view. To be honest, I'm a bit overwhelmed. When I was taking this footage, when I'm watching it now, I can't believe the staggering beauty of this place. If you ever get a chance to go to Switzerland, drive through Lauterbrunnen, check out Interlaken, it's some of the most amazing views you could possibly see on every direction, and the video will never do it justice. Here's the family standing on the bridge next to the parking lot where this waterfall is at, and it's only 50 meters to our car at this point, and another 50 meters away to see this waterfall. It's incredible what you can see, even if you don't have high levels of mobility, or you're pulling around a bunch of kids who don't have high levels of mobility. There's a lot of accessible, beautiful things throughout this entire country. Personally, I think that's wonderful. We got a strawberry rhubarb pie in the oven, made with whatever we could find. Say hi, Liam. Hi. Say hi, Sky. <laughs> hi. Zach, oh my god, you're 15, you're on camera. Woo. Hello. This is what spring break looks like for the Sigurd family. <gasps> Sigurd family. Sigurd family spring break. Snowstorm. <laughs> well, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. Say hi, River. Hi. Hi. Who's Junie? Say hi, Junie. Hi. Eventually, we did get some good weather and had to abandon our time in that awesome ancient house and head up to the mountains. We were even lucky enough to have low enough winds on top of Jungfrau here to launch the tiny 249 gram drone. This was incredibly risky because a strong enough wind would have blown this thing off of the little snow platform we were on and I never ever would be able to find it. This mountaintop is often called quote the top of Europe unquote because it has the highest train station in Europe. It is not the highest point in Europe but it's the highest one accessible by most people. You have to take a 6.8 kilometer gondola. I think that's the distance. It's six or seven kilometer gondola up to a train station and then take the train up through the center of the mountain that emerges on the top of this place. Eventually, we do make it up to this observatory slash scientific research station on the very top, but I'm actually filming this from the lower plateau where you can go outside and enjoy the snow a little bit. At 11,300 feet in the air, you can really feel the altitude. It's not quite as bad as Pikes Peak in Colorado, which you can get up to 14,000 foot by car, but there's a lot more walking involved in this one, so I definitely felt it. All right, everybody, I'm coming around. We're the only ones up top, so you can wave to the camera when it comes by. Hold on, there, you're in screen. Wave, you're at the top of Europe. I had to delete the audio on this portion because the ice cave through the glacier is quite echoey. Now this thing is sealed off on both ends and they maintain it below freezing so it's not melting even though warm bodies are passing through it nearly every day. The floors are highly polished ice as well. Luckily it's actually not that slippery. And the walls are highly polished from all the people touching them over the years. Now, I'm not typically a big fan of uh, taking something that is a natural resource or has natural beauty like a glacier or a cave system and over-developing it into a tourist attraction. But it was pretty nice to walk through a glacier cave. That's a neat thing that I never thought I'd get a chance to do. Seeing as this cave is not contributing to the melting of the glacier and they're keeping it nice and cold and maintaining it, I'm trying to view it as a form of conservation and not as a form of destruction. One place that doesn't get those good graces 
is Ruby Falls in, I think, Kentucky. They took a awesome underground waterfall and installed lights and speakers and dug a cave, well, dug, dug a tunnel directly to it. And the tour on that one was actually a, a little bit uh, infuriating. For example, they had the bottom of a massive stalactite. Wait, stalactite on ceiling, stalagmite. The bottom of a giant stalagmite where it had been hollowed out underneath and it was still hanging and it looked like a giant elephant's foot. And like, this is the elephant foot formation. No, you dug a tunnel under a stalagmite and it's hanging there in midair showing you the amount of destruction that you've made. Personally, I'm the kind of person who would rather enjoy the natural beauty instead of the artificial created natural beauty. But the ice cave was super cool regardless, so it gets a pass from me this time. Hey, we just came off the mountain. We got our own gondola. Everyone say hi. Hi. Yeah. The whole Sigwert family all together enjoying these breathtaking views. Ooh, a view. Oh my god. This ride was so long that I went ahead and did a time lapse of the rest of it. Absolutely stunning views, as is the norm in this area of Switzerland. So I hope you enjoy these as well. And if you've made it 16 and a half minutes into this video with me, I greatly appreciate it. That's an enormous amount of retention for a video that is mostly drone shots and long form with a whole heck of a lot of voiceover. Subscribe if you want to see more of this content. If you want other people to see more of this content, hit like and comment or share. Those all tell YouTube that you enjoyed this and we'll get more people on board to enjoy it as well. It's okay if this video flops because it's something the family can look back on in the future. But if you're still here, Thank you for watching to the end.